99% of the time, Pokemon is a fun, innocent experience. Running around, exploring nature, finding all sorts of wondrous creatures, and vibing out to some of the chillest tunes ever scribed. But every once in a while, the creators of this magical world wake up and choose violence. You read the title, you know the deal. Today, we're talking about, well, I don't want to say the three most annoying Pokemon to obtain. There's enough of those to fill a post-2018 Marvel movie. These are three of the most annoying Pokemon to obtain that have an interesting explanation behind them. Like, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that if you want to get a Hoopa in Oras, you need to be at McDonald's in 2015. Instead, today, we're breaking down all the math and statistics behind three of the most infuriating Pokemon to obtain. Richard, hit that intro. Let's kick things off with one that a lot of you are probably thinking of. Feebas. I've always heard that getting a Milotic in Generation 3 was pretty annoying, but then I started doing some research and realized, oh, no, I'd rather gargle broken glass. So, say you're playing through the original Ruby, Sapphire, or Emerald, and you want to use a really cool Milotic on your team. Well, first step is to get a Feebas. And already, we run into a problem. Feebas can only be found by fishing on Route 119 and whoa, 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 not like that. What? You thought you could just fish on any old tile on the route from the wiki and find the Pokemon you want? Ha! Unlike literally every other Pokemon in the game, Feebas can only be found on six randomly selected water tiles in this route. There's no way of knowing which tiles are the right ones, and to make matters worse, even if you do happen to fish on a Feebas tile, you still have a 50% chance of finding something other than a Feebas, so you have no way of knowing if you missed it. Thankfully, there is a simple way to basically guarantee yourself a Feebas. If you go through the whole route, fishing on all 436 water tiles until you find one Pokemon, you're guaranteed to have fished on the six Feebas tiles, along with 430 that were a total waste of time. Since you have a 50-50 shot of finding a Feebas on each of these six tiles, the odds of you making it all the way to the end and never finding one is a mere 1.5%. So basically, if you fish on every single tile on the route once, you have a 98.5% chance to find the Feebas. If you don't, just head back to the top and start again. Look, I said it was simple, I never said it would be fun. But now, you've got a Feebas. Great! Now all you gotta do is level it up to the appropriate level to get a Milotic- What? The heck is beauty? Right, okay, so from Generation 5 onward, all you gotta do to evolve a Feebas is to trade it while holding a Prism Scale. However, if you want to use one in its native Generation 3, you need to raise its Beauty, one of the stats associated with Pokemon contests, to a value of 170 or higher. Now, personally, I've never messed with contests, and I'm pretty sure 99% of you haven't either. You just did the one where you were spamming moves with the beauty tag to get a free Pikachu. But surely they can't be that complicated, right? That was some ironic foreshadowing, if you couldn't tell. It's very complicated. In order to raise your Pokemon's beauty, you need to feed it dry Pokeblocks. Pokeblocks can be made in this little mini game where you mix berries to create little fruit snacks. So if you're like me, you probably read this and thought, all right, well, I got a million orange berries with the dry tag kicking around. Let me crank a bunch of those out into Pokeblocks, feed them to my Feebas, level it up, and I'm done. And if you did that, 
Congratulations! Your Feebas is now physically incapable of evolving for the rest of time. It turns out that Pokeblocks are way more complicated than I thought. Not only does each type of berry create different types of Pokeblocks that raise different stats by different amounts, but they also have a hidden value called feel. No idea why it's called that, but the feel of a Pokeblock raises a Pokemon's semi-hidden sheen value. Once a Pokemon's sheen hits 255, they can no longer eat any Pokeblocks. There's no way to bring a Pokemon's sheen back down. Once it's maxed out, that's it. You're stuck with whatever mistakes you've made. So, let's do a little math, shall we? A Pokeblock made with an Orinberry grants 12 beauty, and has a feel of 23. Doing some division, that means that you could give your Feebas 12 of these Pokeblocks before maxing out its sheen, bringing its final beauty to 144, 26 points short of being able to evolve, with no way to fix it. Obviously, I mean, what you should have done was track down the rare palm tree berry from the Berry Master's wife on Route 123, plant it, wait 24 real world hours for it to grow, and repeat the process so you have at least four of them to turn into Pokeblocks to get the required beauty to evolve your Feebas. I mean, I don't see how anyone could be confused by this. The worst part is that this whole system is not explained to you in any way. Most of these values are partially or completely invisible, and if you mess up, your only option is to get another Feebas. Now, if the Feebas that you found happened to be female, you're in luck. You can just throw it in the daycare with any Pokemon from the Water 1 or Dragon egg groups and hatch yourself a new one at level 1. If you happen to catch a male Feebas though, then your only way to obtain a new Feebas egg is by putting it into the daycare with a Ditto, which can only be found late into Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. If you don't feel like spending 30 hours playing an entirely different game, then your only option is to head back to Route 119 and start the whole process over again. But in the end, it'll all be worth it for, I mean, I guess a pretty strong water type. It's got good bulk and it hits pretty hard. But if all you wanted was a bulky special water type, you could have just caught a Whalmer on pretty much half the routes in the game and leveled it up to 40 to get a Whalord. Or used one of the million other water types. This is literally the OG too much water game. They're not that hard to come by. This game's not even that hard to begin with. The next Pokemon I want to look at is Hydreigon. In order to get this powerful pseudo-legendary Pokemon in its native Generation 5, you have to catch a Dino in Victory Road and level it up to 64. Yep, that's it. No crazy spawn mechanics, no BS evolution requirements. Just catch a Pokemon and level it up. Well, that doesn't sound so bad. And to be fair, compared to the last one, it's not but it is a lot worse than it seems. Every Pokemon species has its own growth rate, which determines how much experience they need to level up. In general, weaker Pokemon have a fast growth rate, meaning they're gaining these levels like no tomorrow. Stronger Pokemon, like the Hydreigon line, have a slow growth rate. This guy eats experience, which can be a problem, when he's the highest level evolution in the franchise. Dino can be caught in Victory Road at level 38 or 39. That means that it requires a cool 253,532 experience points to hit level 64 and actually become usable. For reference, that's about the equivalent of getting your starter Pokemon from level 5 to level 64 also. 
If you're trying to breed a Hydrai gun for competitive play and are hatching it at level 1, you're going to need 327,680 experience points. If you were hoping to have a cool Hydreigon for your Elite Four run and final Team Plasma confrontation, bad news, that's not going to happen. Your best source of fast experience is probably the Elite Four and Champion rematches. Now, Generation 5's experience system is a little wonky, and the amount of experience you gain is dependent on the difference in level between you and your opponent. But for reference, if your little level 39 dino is holding a lucky egg and manages to KO Chantal's rematch Kofagrigus, it will gain a cool 9,752 experience points, roughly 3.8% of what you need. Assuming you get roughly the same amount of experience from the rest of the league, you could, in theory, have a Hydreigon by the time you're done. But there's two problems. First, Dino sucks, and Zwilus isn't much better, so you're probably going to have to do some switch training with something better and only get half the experience. And second, as your Dino levels up, it will simultaneously require more experience to hit the next level and gain less experience per battle since there's less of a difference in your levels. When it comes to Pokemon that evolve simply by leveling them up, this is as bad as it gets. But hey, at least when you're done, you've got an absolute monster of a Pokemon with good speed, bulk, and a massive 125 special attack. And Dark is a pretty solid offensive type, especially against the League. It'd be a shame if, oh, I don't know, Hydreigon was literally incapable of learning any special Dark-type attacks in Generation 5 outside of breeding or anything like that. <sighs> but that brings us into the third and final Pokemon. If you thought the last two were bad, you haven't seen anything yet. While this wasn't a list of the most annoying Pokemon to obtain, this last one is far and away the absolute worst. In the days of yore, also known as 2006, Manaphy was a very elusive Pokemon. In order to obtain one, you needed to complete the spin-off game Pokemon Ranger. Then, you could transfer a special egg to one of the Generation 4 games, hatch it, and get yourself a Manaphy. Now, while this may be time-consuming, beating an entire game for just one Pokemon, a lot of people seem to really enjoy Pokemon Ranger, so hey, it might be fun. And since then, Manaphy has become available in a lot of different ways, so if you really want to get your hands on one, you could do so without too much trouble. However, there is one aspect about the Pokemon Ranger Manaphy specifically that sets it apart. It's the only one that's not shiny locked. If you want to obtain a shiny Manaphy at the time of recording, to my knowledge, this is the only way to do it legitimately. All right, fine, so you beat Pokemon Ranger, get your egg, save right before it hatches, and keep reloading until you get a green one. A shiny hunter's bread and butter. Well, I'll save you some time, that won't work. The way shiny Pokemon are generated is a little bit complicated, but basically, if a specific part of a Pokemon's personality value matches a specific part of your trainer ID, it will be shiny. In Generation 4, the odds of this happening is 1 in 8,192. Now, those are two things that are way too complicated to get into in this video, but the personality value of your Manaphy is generated once you get the egg, and your trainer ID is generated at the start of the playthrough. So if the egg isn't shiny, doesn't matter how many times you reset, it will never be shiny. And since you're limited to one egg per Pokemon Ranger game, you can't simply transfer another one in either. 
let me reiterate that. Eggs are limited to one per game. As in, one per game cartridge. If you hatch your egg and it's not shiny, tough luck. If you want another shot, you have to buy another game and play it to completion. This is absolutely insane, and believe me, it's even worse than it seems. According to How Long to Beat, Pokemon Ranger takes around 11 hours to finish. And if you want a new, unopened game that's guaranteed to still have a Manaphy on it, today that's going to cost you around $600. If it takes you an expected 8,192 eggs to get the shiny Manaphy, that's around 4,915,200 and a total of 10 straight years of Pokemon Ranger gameplay. Actually accomplishing this is pretty much impossible, but luckily there is an easier way. As we established earlier, there's no way to change the personality value of your Manaphy's egg once you have it. But we can change our trainer ID by simply committing murder. Here's the process. Beat Pokemon Ranger and transfer the egg into a Generation 4 game. Interestingly, it's programmed so that it's impossible for Manaphy to be shiny in the game you first transfer it to. It seems like they were intending to shiny lock this Manaphy, but there is a workaround. If you get another copy of a Generation 4 game and play to the point where you can unlock trading, preferably Diamond and Pearl since those are the quickest, you can trade the egg over to that game and there is a 1 in 8192 chance that that trainer's ID will match your egg and you'll get a shiny Manaphy. If you hatch it and it's not shiny, do not save your game. Reset it to get the egg back, then grab your first copy of Diamond and Pearl, murder that guy, and create a new trainer for a new ID, trade the egg back, and try again. If you keep repeating this process on loop, executing any trainer incapable of bearing a shiny Manaphy like your King Henry VIII, eventually you will find your very own shiny Manaphy. It's functionally identical to the regular one. Obviously, this is a completely insane and unreasonable thing to attempt, so I'm sure most of you are absolutely folding to your intrusive thoughts right now and thinking, I'm totally doing it. How long will it take me? Well, it takes an average of 25 minutes to play to the point where you can trade in Diamond and Pearl. And at the full shiny odds, you're going to have to do it an average of 8,192 times, plus the 11 hours it took you to beat Pokemon Ranger the first time. Let's assume that you work on this for 8 hours a day, because work-life balance is important. I mean, we're not crazy here. At that rate, you'll probably find that shiny Manaphy in a mere 1 year and 2 months. Over a year of repetitive, soul-crushing work, playing the same tiny stretch of a game over and 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 over again, all for a little green amoeba. Sounds like a rip-roaring time to me. But what do you think? What are some other really annoying Pokemon to get with some interesting math behind them? Let me know in the comments and maybe I'll make a follow-up to this someday. Now, I was planning on ending this video with a great bit where I'd say, all right, time to go shiny hunt the Manaphy. I'd pull out my DS and then get bored after half a second and throw it away. But it turns out that my DS has like vanished to the ether somewhere. I have no idea where it is. So uh, you just got to trust me. It was a great bit. It was going to be so fun. Oh, you don't even understand how hilarious this bit was going to be. Oh, it was going to blow your mind. Oh, it was going to be so good. They were stuck with me ranting on a bit that never happened. And a massive thank you to all my patrons, including Alakazam, Aspa102, Big Dog Tie for the Win, Sidian, Gremlin the Goblin, Sherry and Mark, Starjoy, The Boss Killer 94, and Captain Kirby.